This is Shane Gibson's podcast from ClosingBigger.net. Today, I want to focus on moving from extraction to collaboration-based selling. I think this is a really important topic. We've gone through a lot of transition in the last few years in the world of selling and how both the business buyer and the consumer has shifted in what they want and also what they're willing to tolerate. This podcast was actually inspired by a sales troll, I would call them, on TikTok. Maybe they're not a troll, but I think they're they're misguided. And maybe not all that articulate, in my opinion. But of course, it's my opinion. So I posted on TikTok a video. And the video was, Why Sales is Not Like Dating. You can find that at Shane Gibson Live on TikTok. I think I also posted it on at Shane Gibson on Instagram as well. But again, I posted this on why sales is not like dating. And the response was 99.5% positive, but there's always this one guy out there. And his response was, no, sales is just like dating, right up to the kiss, which I'm not sure what type of interactions he has with his clients. But, you know, for me, this didn't make sense. But then he went on to say, value-based selling is weak, which for me is a really interesting perspective. So it got to me thinking of of this analogy and, and why it's so popular and, and I think maybe I'll give you a little background on, on what I said on the video very briefly here. And so what I had to say on the video was this, is that I've heard salespeople say to me, well, I, I followed up on the prospect. You know, they inquired. Uh, they had an initial conversation with me. I followed up once, and then I didn't hear back. I followed up again. And you know what? I think they're just not into me. It's kind of like dating. You don't keep pushing and calling and calling if they're not interested. You leave them alone. You move on to the next. So I think this is a bit of a a misconception in many ways. I don't think sales is like dating. I think it's more like you're a personal trainer and a health and wellness coach. Friend of yours says, please help me get better. You know what? My blood pressure is high. I put on a bit of weight during the pandemic. My doctor says there's some health issues related to this. I need help getting in shape. And you say, fantastic. I got a program for you. And then you're there at the gym. You're waiting at 8 a.m. for them to show up and they never show up. And you call them and then no response. Do you quit on your friend? They've shared with you that they want to improve their life. They want things to get better. Uh, They know they have to do it. They're uncomfortable with it. It's something new for them. Do you give up on them? In most cases, we don't. We're going to find a creative way to engage them with respect until they can engage us and communicate as to why maybe they don't want to get started yet or help them get over the initial challenge of starting positive inertia in their life. And that's what I believe sales is more like, is that it isn't really about that, are you interested or not? Are you in or out? There's varying degrees of each. And so from this perspective, I shared this. Now, I also do believe that sales is a lot like relationships from the perspective of many of you have seen in my seminars, I talk about the five stages of relationship development that my father originally created a couple decades ago. And it goes from attraction to expiration to development, to commitment, to unity. And so there is that that arc of a relationship. And sales is similar to personal relationships in that way as we progress through these relationships. By no means is it like dating. And so I think that, you know, why this analogy of sales being like dating is so popular is I think back to the way sales once was, a highly male-dominated environment. And I remember having one vice president of sales for a major bank, and I won't name the bank here in Canada, and I was off to meet with him in Toronto, flew out to meet with him to propose doing training for their organization. And it was actually a, a brokerage division of a major bank. And he claimed he would take his potential recruits, all male, to a bar. And whoever could pick up someone would get hired. Now, this was 15 years ago. And I'll tell you that even 15 years ago, this super alpha male conquest mentality was already dated in the, way, in the world of sales. And today, it has no place in professional selling. And the biggest challenge I see with this mentality is it is an extraction-based, get-something-out-of-someone-else transactional mentality, which, like I said, has no place in professional selling. But when I talk about professional selling, I really want to define what professional selling is. So there's this skill set called sales. And I believe that everybody's in sales. If you want to go to one movie and your spouse or your friend wants to go another, you're in sales. You're persuading them. You're trying to find a common ground and get some buy-in to your idea. Or maybe the fact that you know this movie is actually going to be better than the one that they picked. And the whole idea is to collaboratively find a great outcome for both of you. So that's that's sales. It's a skill set of persuasion, connecting, identifying needs, and then moving to a point where there's a commitment and, and a delivery, a sense of value. So that's sales in general. 
So that applies in almost every aspect of life and every career has some level of sales and persuasion involved. But then there's sales people. These are people who are employed specifically to sell a solution, a product, or service. But then I believe there's another level, which is professional selling. And this is where we see sales evolving to, where it's not just a skill set or a job, but it's actually a profession. So I think about the Canadian Professional Sales Association actually has three levels of certification now. The first is certified sales associate. I've got an entire competency map from everything from financial literacy to ethics to tech skills, to communication skills, to traditional sales skills, will make you a certified sales associate with a couple years of sales experience and some in-depth training. Then they move up to certified sales professional, which is someone who's been selling for about five years and has those CSA level skills, but has also now moved up to a full-on professional. This is a sales leader and a true account manager and client advisor. And then for me, at another layer, which of course is kind of my niche or specialty, is an enterprise sales professional, which is someone who specializes in large, complex, big deals. They're typically the rainmakers in sales organizations. So there's a lot to unpack here, but I wanted to share how I define selling because really what I'm talking about is making a choice to not just be in sales or have sales skills or be a salesperson, but actually what does it take to be a sales professional and how to build a career out of it. So there's a lot of to unpack here. So I think what I want to talk about here is where we've come from and where we're moving. So we talked about that transactional, hey, sales is like dating mentality. And I want to talk about where we've moved to a little bit and then share my thoughts on some of the skill sets and outlooks that we need to build to really be secure in our career and maximize our opportunities and be a true value add within our company, our community, and our client base. So let's talk about where we've come from. So I think about traditional selling and traditional economies, and today we've moved into collaboration and value-based selling. So what is the difference? A traditional, traditional salesperson really explains value. They handle objections, they push for a close, and that is a skill set which is valuable, you know, especially in short-term or transactional sales where you're going to see the customer once and they really only want to talk to you for two minutes. But at that level, that's a very traditional and limited level of selling. Collaboration-based selling isn't just about explaining value. In most cases, our customers can go on the internet, I know you've heard me say this before, and they can do a ton of research, learn a lot about our business, talk to our customers, and when they show up, they already understand the value in many cases. Our goal as a salesperson is not to explain value anymore. It's to partner with the client and actually create value for them through collaboration. And sometimes that creating value is just explaining to them how they're going to use your product better to suit their needs, for instance. But it is about partnership. And this is the big shift that I see. And this is definitely not a one and done, get someone's phone number, have one date type of mentality. This is a long-term relationship building value added mentality. Then, of course, I think, where does this come from? Well, I think a lot of it comes from the fact that our whole world right now is going through a shift. And, you know, there's pockets in other er some areas that have evolved more and some that are really stuck where we were traditionally. But we've, we're moving from an extraction-based colonial system. And I don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole here. This may trigger a few people. Uh, I'm not suggesting that all of selling should move into a socialist-type mentality. But what I am saying is in the past, extraction mentality, if you think about it traditionally, colonial is that we would conquer a new land and we would extract all the minerals, the natural resources, get everything we could get out of that land and bring it back to the homeland where we make profits. And so all the value is accrued by the extractor. There isn't a collaborative benefit to the other end. So today, our economy is not as much extraction-based. We're moving to this point where it's sustainable collaboration long-term focused economic models. We even look at, you know, today, many companies focusing on the entire life cycle, their product, for instance, from creation right down to actually breaking it down again, recycling it, rebuilding it, refurbishing it, and put it back in the marketplace. They're taking full responsibility for the whole product life cycle. So as we move from this extraction-based temporary transaction, use it, throw it out, get something new mentality to a sustainable collaboration-based economy, our sales approach also has to change with the mentality shift in a lot of our corporate and consumer clients. So, you know, traditional is appropriation, right? It's take the best of what I see and 
claim it as mine, where today we're seeing more partnership, attribution, and collaboration in the marketplace. From a sales perspective, it was the sales road warrior, the one individual out on their own, banging on doors, uh, no team with them, no process, all personality, all grit, all guts, all glory. And even from this perspective, beyond that, even the ones that were in a team, it was about the sales team. Today, it's about the whole company. It's about the community beyond the company. How does our sales actions and what we're doing impact our company as a whole and our community that our company serves? Then we moved traditionally from extrovert. So traditional selling was, I want to be an extrovert. This is what it is. It's about being extroverted. It's about taking space. It's about talking over our customers. And today, the most effective sales professionals are actually ambiverts or personality style shifters who are great at getting in sync with other people, holding space, and building bridges so they can collaborate with them and truly develop a solution in partnership with a client. We move from transaction-focused selling, which is, again, back to that pick-up artist, just picking someone up. Transaction, trying to get something from somebody to a lifetime customer mentality. How can I lay the foundation to secure lifetime customers? And we move from that customer and prospect mentality to actually community members and advocates. I want to build a community of my clients and I want to service them so well and develop solutions so in sync with what they need that they become advocates, unpaid brand ambassadors in the marketplace. So then we think about the other one, which I think is really important, is traditionally there's the persona. And persona versus person is a really important piece. And most of us, you know, through different stages of our life, I know in my 20s, I was very, maybe actually into part of my 30s as well, I was very focused on my persona, what I looked like, uh, car we drove, who we hung out with, the brands we wore, the impression we gave in the marketplace. But then my kind of life and my world came crashing down with one of my, you know, my first business failure, my first big business failure. It was a reality as I was doing all the things that looked good and sounded good, but I neglected to actually build the person, the acumen, the skill set, the credibility, the knowledge, the expertise that was required to sustain the growth I created through persona. So I think from this perspective today, building the person and focusing on our unique attributes and also realizing that we're imperfect is a value shift that is becoming more and more relevant in the marketplace. And this is where we hear things like the fact that transparency or vulnerability can actually be huge skills and huge opportunities when we're dealing with clients. Then, of course, traditionally, very male-focused, regional, national. This was sales. Today, it's inclusive. It's global in our thinking. And it really is much broader. There's a much broader set of skill sets, communication styles, and experience that bring true value. Diversity in our sales team and our client base is actually a strength, and leading organizations are now focusing on that. And lastly, I think this is an important one, and it leads into what we can do as individual sales professionals to embrace this new model of selling and economics is it's moved from ego to curiosity. And this is so important. I don't know how many deals and relationships I've seen collapse out of defensiveness, out of the desire to be seen and talk over someone else or to push our views or the fact that, hey, I know this better than my customer and I'm going to shove it down their throat to a place of curiosity where I'm willing to listen and be curious about what others have to say, even if they got opinions that are a bit different than mine, maybe a global view that's a bit different than mine. But from this perspective, people who can lean away from their ego and into being curious about other people are going to be the ones that are able to build true bridges in this global, inclusive marketplace, which I believe offers more opportunity than any regional or nationally focused mentality. So what can we do to really skill up and shift our, our skill set and our outlook to take advantage of this. Number one, I think there's two big pieces of acumen. So the first one is business acumen. Too many salespeople only know enough to sell their products. And even that, they only know surface level uh, information about their products and their benefits. Acumen is digging deep and understanding our customers and understanding how our products and services impact a variety of customers deep and broad. You really wanna geek out on your target market, their industry, their clients, your products, your services, 
your solutions, people are looking for expertise, not just experience. They don't care if you've been around for 20 years if you don't have expertise. It's truly about expertise and unique knowledge you can offer to the client. And when you have that and you're really great at holding space and being curious, that's when you can start to partner. Then, of course, deep human skills. Emotional intelligence is a vital piece navigating this very different global marketplace. Uh, another word for emotional intelligence, term for emotional intelligence, my partner, Little Wu, is uh, studying right now her master's in restorative justice. And she brought up this term emotional literacy, which is being, you know, exchanged with emotional intelligence, but it's actually a bit more of a positive term, I think, than emotional intelligence. Like, who wants to hear that you need to improve your intelligence, right? It's kind of insulting. But emotional literacy, I like that, is am I fully literate in all the levels of being empathetic, really being able to read cues from other individuals, knowing what's appropriate, how to build bridges, and how to lean away from the ego and into curiosity. And that skill set, investing in that skill set, that ability to be truly empathetic and lead customers through collaboration really is going to help you bring humanity into your selling. And I believe that is what's going to create great sales leaders of the present and the future. This is Shane Gibson's podcast from closingbigger.net. And again, you can follow me on TikTok at Shane Gibson Live, on Instagram at Shane Gibson, and of course, LinkedIn.com forward slash IN forward slash Shane Gibson.